For the third straight Sunday, the Cleveland Browns needed to play a full 60 minutes of football. Unfortunately, this Sunday, the Browns weren't able to do it and fell up short in Seattle. Lot to talk about. Your postgame Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to you the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, now seventh season with you all here on Lockdown Browns. I want to thank everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. And the Everyday Crowd, I appreciate you all so much. Join the Everyday Crowd by subscribing to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. And of course, Lockdown Browns is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts 24 20 and Cleveland Browns come up short in a game where they started slow came back with a resounding effort on offense and defense got the game to 17 17 got the game to 20 to 17 and unfortunately with under two minutes to go a play call that will be highly scrutinized and I can understand that I do um, certainly wasn't executed third and three um, at worst Browns take a sack the Browns run and don't get the first down you punt it you put Seattle in a position where they're playing for a field goal not for a touchdown I get all of it I get all of it so let's I guess we'll go right to it right third and three um, look but I've ran the ball would every single one of you ran the ball? I'm um, judging by my mentions here on social media that every single one of you would have ran the ball as well. Um, but the play call was what it was. And, you know, everybody in the arena obviously thought the Cleveland Browns were going to run the ball. And that's still, that's why you should have ran the ball, obviously. Um, you know, at worst, you don't get the three yards, and that would have been fine. Seattle takes a timeout. Uh, Baracquez, obviously, as we all know, has you know been a fantastic punter in his time here with the Browns, and now you're talking Seattle probably going somewhere at worst, you know, with 80 yards to go, most likely would have changed everything. They would have been down to one timeout, and they would have been you know trying you know for a game tying field goal to send the game to overtime. I get it, but here's the thing: Jerome Ford was wide open, David Njoku was wide open. So when everybody in the world thinks you're going to zig, it's not the worst thing in the world to zag. And that was the play call they went with. And like I said, there were two guys wide open. And P.J. Walker, when Jamal Adams is in the position that he is in, Jamal Adams makes an, uh, Jamal Adams makes an ungodly amount of money in the NFL. And I got to be honest, the only time Jamal Adams has ever had great impact on the defensive side of the ball is usually when he is rushing the passer. Or blissing the passer. That is the best part. You go talk to Jets folks that used to cover Jamal Adams all the time. They called him an edge safety because that was the biggest impact Jamal Adams had. P.J. Walker should have known exactly what Jamal Adams was doing and should have known that that was the last place in the world to throw the ball. And it's not even like Jamal Adams made a play because the block was there. P.J. Walker threw the ball in a Jamal Adams helmet, and we all had the same reaction looking at the screen, I'm sure, where Oh my God, where is the football? Well, the football was in the air for what felt like, what, 30 seconds, <laughs> 40 seconds, held damn near a minute. And then obviously it comes down in the hands of Julian Love. Look, I'm not not going to give Coach Stefanski a pass for the play call. Um, yes, a thousand times out of a thousand times, I'm going to run the ball there. I'm going to make Seattle use one more time out. I'm going to put my punter on the field. But the play call was there. The call was there. And for everybody who wants to get on Coach Stefanski, this game is 14 nothing, right quick, right? 14 nothing, right quick. So what's been the bread and butter here for a lot of part of the season, and to be fair, it wasn't the bread and butter last week, and it certainly wasn't the bread and butter today, the defense. They, they were just getting toasted early. You know, Kenneth Walker, 45 yards. Granted, they turned around, did a fantastic job. Charbonneau, however, 
did have their number a little bit. They couldn't cover anybody early. Couldn't cover Tyler Lockett. Couldn't cover DK Metcalf. Had a big one early. Um, so it's you know, this is all around an effort. And then go on the road, <clears throat> like a place like Seattle, and to expect to win this game. You know, you needed obviously a lot more cleanliness in all ways around. You certainly cannot have PJ Walker turning the ball over four times. And look, you know, what are you going to do? He's the quarterback here for right now. He's not supposed to be. It's obviously supposed to be Deshaun Watson. Uh, there's nothing the Browns can do about that. Obviously, as Deshaun Watson is out, I pray to God Deshaun Watson's back next week. I don't care if it's the Arizona Cardinals or not. Um, there's things you like about PJ Walker, but there's things that let you know how PJ Walker is maybe a marginal quarterback at having a roster spot here in the NFL. It, it, there's some good things to him, and then there's just some careless recklessness to him. Turnovers last week, you know, four turnovers. I mean, uh, turnovers against San Francisco, obviously four turnovers today. You, you just got to take better care of the football when you're a backup quarterback. Look, punting is not the worst thing in the world when you're a backup quarterback, certainly when you have a strong defense. I understand you do not want to tire out your defense, but you can't just think that you're going to go out there, perform, and make plays like the starter. And, you know, Coach Fansky, look, up until that last play call, I had zero issues. The screen drive was fantastic. As I told you guys all week long, I wanted Pierre Strong involved. I wanted to find a role for Pierre Strong. Guess what? They found some roles for Pierre Strong, and guess what? It worked out, and it worked out really well for Pierre Strong. Uh, you know, Kareem Hunt, I thought, ran with a lot of, you know, effort today, a lot of heart today understanding how difficult this game was going to be able to win on the road in an environment like Seattle. David Njoku, inspired effort. Amari Cooper, better effort, obviously, after a tough week last week against the Indianapolis Colts. And, you know, you can go back to that third and three, but, you know, when they got bailed out by that hands to the face by Reek Woolen, P.J. Walker, I think, was on time with the ball. I think Amari Cooper was slow out of his break. And P.J. Walker threw a beautiful ball on that play. Um, look, he is inconsistent. I'm not going to lie. That's why he's you know a guy that's barely struggling to keep a roster spot in the NFL. Would I have run the ball a thousand times out of a thousand? Would I have ran the ball in that situation? Or even if I ran that play that I did, I would have told P.J. Walker, take the snap, never throw the football, and see if you can create the three yards on your own. There are a million other ways to do it. But you guys ready to fire a coach who came back from 14-0 on the road to have his team – in that position late in the game. Look, I get that y'all hate the play call. I do. I don't really like the play call either. I probably hate it myself. But the play was there to be had. And there were certain other avenues, way, what you could have done there, that you could have made it a lot more difficult for Seattle. Um, that being said, you know, defense has got to make plays too. And, you know, they couldn't make it when it mattered. But we're going to continue on here. Um, talk a little bit more about, you know, the quarterback play, the offensive side of the ball segment three. We're going to get a little bit to the defense side of the ball. Your latest lockdown Browns, sadly, Cleveland loses 24, 20 in Seattle in a game that I feel, and I'm sure many of you feel the Browns should have had. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Browns running back Kareem Hunt has come back to the team and been leaned on again with Nick Chubb injured for the long term. The Browns need to win with the running game and defense now with QB issues, and Hunt draws a fantastic magic matchup to run well in Week 9. The Browns are at home against the Cardinals, wilting defense, and should be in a positive situation for a game script to make sure they can stick with running Hunt. Hunt has a good chance to put together a big game leading the Cleveland Committee. Vinny Ayer from Locked On Fantasy. Vinny Ayer from Locked On Fantasy is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows the championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride always stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Jeff Lloyd, you're not so happy non-victorious Monday episode of Lockdown Browns. Uh, once again, Cleveland Browns, 24-20 losers in Seattle. Once again, this game went down to the wire. Unfortunately, the Browns didn't have the magic in the hat this week that they had had the last two weeks. Uh, questionable play call, third and three. Browns in control. Uh, could have just ran the ball, taken a knee, had P.J. Walker just run up the middle, see whatever he could have gotten. Denver, uh, so Seattle would have called a timeout which would have put the Browns in position to punt, which would have meant Seattle would have had about 50 yards minimum probably to try to travel to get a game-tying field goal. P.J. Walker, look, there were some highlights today. You know, early, you know, P.J. obviously the fumble, the interception early, but the screen drive really got P.J. going. Um, credit to P.J. Walker. I think he did a much better job today, obviously, using his legs. There were some you know, more designed things called for him. Um, and this is something we've been talking about for P.J. Walker here the last couple of weeks, uh, trying to get him more involved with his legs. This is a guy that can make some play with his, plays with his legs, even though if I ever see another Browns quarterback lean into a tackle with a shoulder, it's going to make me – lose my absolute ever loving mind. We did get to see a, an appearance from DTR today, a uh, little shovel pass on an RPO. That was beautiful for David Njoku for nine yards. Uh, the offense though, look, I mean, you take the turnovers out of it. You know, you play against the Seattle Seahawks. We're a very, very well balanced team on the offensive side of the ball and certainly on the defensive side of the ball, but you know, Amari Cooper, it was there. The effort was there today. Amari Cooper, much, much better day where he was not harassed like he was against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, David Njoku, obviously his first touchdown of the season. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. I know, this is a play the San Francisco 49ers run. Basically, you fake a screen to the left, you fake a screen to the right, and you just wait just long enough for the tight end to leak as everybody's kind of got their feet crossed because we're going left, we're going right. And all of a sudden, now everything's going behind you to David Njoku for the touchdown. Kareem Hunt, obviously, with another touchdown today. That is four touchdowns for Kareem Hunt in his three game, last three games here as he returns to the Cleveland Browns. Um, and for everything the Browns hoped Kareem Hunt could have been, when they brought him back into the fold, he truly, truly, um, it, it was a really, really good thing for them. And I got to be honest, I think Kareem Hunt this year looks a lot better than what the version of Kareem Hunt we saw last year. Um, you know, Kareem looked old, you know, and Kareem has never been like the guy where you would just, oh my God, so fast. But I think he's quicker. I think he's got better acceleration than he did when he was with Cleveland last year. Who knows if it was a shape thing? Who knows if it was an injury type of thing? Uh, but Kareem Hunt, man, this is a guy that just you know, lives and dies for this franchise. You see him out there week in, week out, doing everything he can to contribute. And, you know, it, it's just, you know, it, it's really, really good to see. The issue is, is when you get to, you know, a game three with a guy like P.J. Walker, it's really, really hard to start coming up with some new stuff. Um, it's hard to come up with stuff that nobody's seen yet. And that's, you know, kind of the tale that Van Pelt and Stefanski are tasked with here. Um, and you're trying to make somebody um, who's, you know, look like he's more than he is. Um, but they did for almost 59 minutes. They did with PJ Walker, you know, PJ Walker, again, look, you have to be more conscious of what you were doing with the football. The Seattle secondary has got a very, very good reputation for turning the ball over. Uh, you picked on Reek Woolen a couple of times. Um, one bit you a couple other times. It could have easily, you know, bit you as well. Um, the Seattle defense, they're jokes. They're a bunch of veteran players. They know what they're doing. You know, Bobby Wagner is still one of the most effective interior linebackers in the entire NFL. But I really, and even still going back to the play call on third and three, you had really, really picked up the momentum in running the ball. You had really changed the, the tides with that. Uh, a couple of carries early didn't go your way. Uh, we barely saw Jerome Ford in the first half. All of a sudden there was Jerome Ford in the second half. You know, looked like he had some good movement to him, at least, you know, uh, enough movement to contribute. Look, it's it, it was just, you know, it, it didn't work. And we all would have done it a different way. I think we can all agree to the fact we all would have done it differently in that situation. Um, but, again, you know, if you want to check my Twitter feed, there's Jerome Ford wide open. And you know what? Next to him, there was David Ajoku also wide open. You, you, you try to be different. You, you try to, you know, go against the grain. And that's – what Stefanski's play call did. Look, I wouldn't have done it, and I know none of y'all would have done it, and that's why many of you are so also aggravated. 
But was the play there to be had? Yes, it was. Would I have still called that play called even if you told me the play was there to be had? No. <laughs> Not in a million, million years. In that instance, I probably would have, you know, either gone up the gut with Kareem, gone up the gut with Jerome Ford, or tried to run, you know, some sort of, you know, uh, read option, you know, with PJ Walker, and maybe Pierre Strong, because maybe if PJ doesn't get it, whatever, he gets down, or you pitch out a guy like Pierre Strong, and who knows, in a situation like that where everybody in Seattle was selling out, Pierre, PJ, uh, Pierre Strong could either flip the field, taking it to the house, or it could have been the you know absolute final nail in the coffin for the Browns pulling out that victory. It's games like this that'll always bother you. It's it's the ones that you had, and you know, look, I mean, for the Browns to have an, even have the possibility of having a three-game winning streak with P.J. Walker as our quarterback would have been miraculous. Um, you know, to be 2-1 and one in this situation is still really, really damn good. You'll still go back to week two in Pittsburgh, and the two touchdowns that the Pittsburgh Steelers defense scored against you, that's one that's going to still stick in my craw more than this one today. It, it still will be. Um, because in the grand scheme of things, at the beginning of the season, winning a road game at Seattle was always a difficult pot, difficult difficult spot to be in and you just you had it certainly had it It was there for the taking you can see you get continue to get consistent kicking play you continue to get consistent um you know punter you know uh Baracquez as far as his contributions as a punter um but you started to bring up some big questions here you know look I mean Elijah Moore he's always open nobody can seem to find him it's ridiculous Amari Cooper gives you great production Amari Cooper gives you great effort David Njoku we all starting to see the consistency and you know what exactly you know Chief can do but you got a serious hole here at wide receiver and I don't know what happened between the contributions Donovan Peoples Jones was able to give this team last year but they're not even throwing it DPJ's way and it's got to be a really frustrating spot for Donovan to be in um you know this team is now 4 and 7 uh, I'm sorry, four and three, rather, my bad. Uh, Ten games to go here in the regular season. And you just cannot find a way, any way whatsoever, to get Donovan Peoples-Jones involved, who's in the middle of a contract here. It's got to be really, really brutal for a guy like him. You know, we'll talk tomorrow. Obviously, the trade deadline is looming on Tuesday. We're going to have to find a way to have some discussions on that. Um, because, you know, there is talk that the Browns might be rumored into a wide receiver. Browns might be rumored into a running back. I don't know why we're talking about the Browns and a running back. The Browns running game is good. I mean, granted, there's no headliner here. Uh, but, you know, Jerome Ford, good. Kareem Hunt, good. Pierre Strong, good. Like I told you, get Pierre Strong more involved. Yeah, I just don't understand why, you know, what the issue is with that. But if the Browns are going to make a change, you know, maybe it's at wide receiver. And, I mean, you're not dressing Cedric Tillman. Maybe it's time to start giving Cedric Tillman some options. But you're in a really, really difficult spot here right now where you are not getting Donovan Peoples-Jones involved. And Donovan Peoples-Jones went from a guy that looked like he was going to be in a really, really good position here this season to where Donovan Peoples-Jones in what is a contract here, nothing's going for him. And nothing's going well for him. And it's got to be really, really difficult if you are Donovan Peoples-Jones. We're going to continue here. Your latest locked on Browns. Browns, unfortunately, needed 60 minutes. Unfortunately, could only give you 58 and change. Come up short against the Seahawks in Seattle. Did the game go to timeout? Well, it's time to order in with DoorDash. Is it halftime? That's ordering time. Two-minute warning. You got it. That's your cue to order in. And with DoorDash, you can use great local places like Athens Pizzeria. Bring in pizzas, bring in sandwiches, maybe bring in some wings. Order di chips, dips, nachos, or everything you need to make your own nachos on DoorDash and get it all delivered without missing the game. Kick back at kickoff with unbeatable deals on everything you need for the watch party or tailgate. That get up to 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. Then when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code LOCKED23, subject to change, terms apply. Again, that's 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order. When you download the DoorDash app and enter code LOCKED23, subject to change, terms apply. Don't forget to use the code LOCKED23 for 50% off up to $10 on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and spend $15 or more. Subject to change, terms apply. I 
Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns. I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. And to the everyday crowd that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, join the everyday crowd by being subscribed to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. And of course, Lockdown Browns is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. Cleveland Browns currently four and three. Yes, there's tiebreakers. Yes, there's everything else. Baltimore Ravens are six and two when the AFC North Pittsburgh Steelers are four and three. The Cleveland Browns are four and three. The Cincinnati Bengals are four and three. For the for the Ravens, nine games to go. For Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, ten games to go apiece. So as much as we all thought that this was going to be a pretty good fight in the AFC North, that is certainly the case, and it appears that it's going to be this case for the foreseeable future. Um, obviously, the Browns play Pittsburgh one more time. They play Baltimore one more time. They play Cincinnati one more time. Browns will be at home next week for the Arizona Cardinals. Does that mean we will see Deshaun Watson? I have no idea, and neither does Coach Stefanski, according to the post-game press conference. But it's games where you fight back like the Browns did today. And obviously being down 14, nothing. And look, I mean, I think we were all to the point where we were pacing and it was like, man, we really thought this team was going to show today. And, you know, you had no guarantee of whether or not the Browns were going to win, but you had a, you had a feeling, you had an inkling that the Browns were at least going to show today and they would give you solid effort. And then all of a sudden they did. And it's 14, seven, get a couple stops. Now it's 14, 14. And all of a sudden, the second half, you know, from the third quarter to basically that final drive, this Browns defense made the adjustments. They were in Geno's head. Geno was throwing some chili peppers. There were some balls to DK Metcalf. I have no idea what he was doing. The interception by more, uh, Martin Emerson to close out the first half. And you want to talk about what the definition is of a defensive back running the route for a wide receiver. Go to that Martin Emerson interception. When people say he ran the route for him, that is the absolute tech, technical definition of it. Beat him to the spot because he knew what was coming. Studied the field. Film, rather. Maurice Hurst. And look, this is the gift that just keeps on giving. I mean, are you kidding me? Maurice Hurst dropping into coverage, throws his left hand up. Not enough to just bat the ball in the air, but continues and then cradles the ball in with his left hand. Um, you know, you had other things. Cam Mitchell, that could have been a pick six. And, you know, Gnu not in the field, obviously, at the time, left the game early. But Cam Mitch, oh, it's just a heartbreaking one. That, that, that probably would have been, of course, a nail in the coffin moment there as well. But you get all that. And, you know, the negatives, the turnovers, and the Seattle offense beating you like a drum to start it. And then you get that chance late. And you do, and you get to a third and three, and it all seems so simple. It does. And look, you know, I admire people for going, you know, the opposite route from what most would do. But in that situation, it just seems so simple. Third and three. Heck, even if it took the damn knee, for God's sakes, it just seems so simple. But all that being said, he went the opposite route that any one of us would have gone. And the play should have been made. And it, it, it was there to be had. And so, you know, are we firing coaches? Stop. This team is 2-1 and one with P.J. Walker playing quarterback. You want to fire the head coach? You want to fire the head coach? Because P.J. Walker is only 2-1 and one over his last three games. And by the way, you're all glory boy. Josh Dobbs is currently 1-7. So let me know how that's working out. So P.J. PJ Walker in three starts for the Browns has twice as many wins as Josh Dobbs. Who's had eight starts for the Arizona Cardinals? But please tell me more about that. Please tell me more about how the general manager didn't bring in a decent enough quarterback when they already put $230 million on the quarterback they had. Defense, you know, lack of pass rush today was probably something that disappointed me a little bit. Uh, I know Seattle's a decent offense. They didn't play that great today. Um, not getting after it enough. And I really thought you know, the Miles Garrett sack, the only sack the Browns had, was going to be a momentum, cha momentum changer at that point. Um, but, you know, got the ball back to you, and you just obviously you, you couldn't close it out. You know, that four-minute offense that, you know, everybody talks about, Browns needed to either just either, you know, get – close to that third, you know, third and three and get that first down, or at least put the hands in the defense one more time and give them a lot more room to work with. Um, you know, the play itself, Geno Smith and Jackson Smith and Jigba, 
you know, Cam Mitchell blitzed on a play, telegraphed the blitz, but I mean, it was the play the whole time. And, you know, as Mitchell started, you know, beelining towards the line of scrimmage, you could see Jackson Smith and Jigba as the ball was snapped, just starting taking those steps laterally as opposed to north and south. You knew what was coming. Juan Thornhill, it wasn't the greatest angle, but I don't think it was going to be an issue anyway. I don't want to hear anything about DK Metcalf's block. He did everything technical to the letter of the law. And Jackson's been the jig, but turns it up, gets to the end zone. Uh, 38 seconds to go, having to go 75 yards for a touchdown with two timeouts. At that point, this Browns offense was already defeated. You knew that was going to happen. Dewan Jones wasn't in on that last drive. Hopefully, Dewan Jones is all right because James Hudson was the right tackle on that last drive. But this one's going to sting. And you got to regroup. We got things to cover this week. We got the possibility of the NFL trade deadline on Tuesday. Will the Browns be involved? Will they not be involved? Certainly all things to monitor. Everyone wants to scream for a wide receiver. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but unless it's Deshaun Watson, a quarterback, you know, we have a quarterback right now that can't go second read, third read, fourth read. So having all these great wide receivers, I'm not sure what the difference that's going to make. I am Jeff Lloyd, your host here at Locked On Browns. Now my seventh season covering the Browns here for Locked On Browns. Uh, I appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. The Everyday Crowd, you guys are the fabric on which this show is built. Everybody join the Everyday Crowd by subscribing to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. And of course, the show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.